subscribe to learn cap and hit the bell icon to get notified hi friends now let's start with a fresh chapter learning curve learning curve is a chapter which actually deals with one very important learning of our life also and that learning is the power of repetition when i started my class i requested all of you to work out each of the questions two times without looking so that one time in the classroom two times at home if you do it three times it goes deep in your subconscious mind and even if you want to forget you cannot forget learning curve says exactly the same thing learning curve says that if you do the same thing again and again and again and again if it normally takes you 10 minutes after repeating it so many times the time taken for it comes down and this is one of the secret mantras for success in the examination also when you look at a costing syllabus or you look at any other syllabus it's practically impossible to complete the whole thing just one day before the exam but if you have done one revision two revision three revision and you keep on recalling things in your mind one day before the exam very quickly you can brush up the whole thing and finish it off bruce lee has rightly said that i am not afraid of a person who knows 1000 moves i am afraid of a person who has done that one move 1000 times or the power of repeating and the power of practice learning curve says that if i do one thing one time and it takes me 100 minutes the same thing when i do for the second time it will not take me so much time it will take me less amount of time so this is the whole background about learning curve the chapter i'll give you an overview now overall concept that we have to learn over here is one we have to learn how to use logarithm this is a basic mathematics that you would have learned in your 8th standard then you have to learn your anti logarithm after that we will learn learning curve and towards the end we will learn advanced learning curve so let's start with the first concept of logarithm log and anti log we'll do it together friend friends i'll learn i'll explain this with an example rather than giving you some theory example i want to find out what is 2 into 3 can you please use your brains or your calculator and tell me what is the answer yes the answer what you get is 6 the same answer we can also derive using our logarithm table logarithm says that if you are trying to multiply here in logarithm you just have to do addition so what we do here is we will do log 2 plus log 3 now this log has got two parts one is got adjacent and the other one is called mantissa don't get panicked adjacent would mean here 2 is only one digit for one digit the adjacent would be zero if it was 20 here then there are two digits two digits adjacent would have been one if it was 200 then it is three digits three digits adjacent would be two suppose it was 245 that's again three digits three digits means adjacent will be two i hope you are clear with the concept of adjacent and mantissa is what we take it from the table adjacent is depending upon the digits and mantissa comes from the table now it is log 2 plus log 3 log 2 would be equal to it will have an adjacent of 0 because it's only one digit so the corresponding value would be 0 for log 3 also adjacent would be 0 to find out the mantissa in exam either they would provide you with the log tables 
or they would give you directly in the question itself. Here we will take the log table and check it out. Yes. Now this is a log table with so many numbers over here. Now we have to find out log 2. Log 2 would come here. Yes. If you see here, log 2 value is turning out to be 0 0.3010. So the value over here would become 0 0.3010. Similarly, we have to take log 3 now. Here is log 3. The value is 0 0.4771. Now we will add up these two values. 0 0.3010 plus 0 0.4771. So we get the answer as 0 0.7781. Therefore, once we get the logarithm, we have to take anti-log. Now, when I take anti-log, first thing, adjacent is 0. Earlier, I told you, one digit, I took it back and I made it 0. Two digit, I'll take it 1. Now, I do a backward working. If it is 0 here, means the total number will have only one digit. That is the logic of this 0. I will have to take the anti-log of 0 0.7781, which I can do it from the same table now. Here now I look for the solution of 0.7781. Yes, this is the place where I get 0.7781. The corresponding value turns out to be 6. I pressed equal to by mistake. That's why it's coming like this. Please ignore that. So the corresponding value what we get over here would be. This is exactly the same answer what we got when we did 2 into 3. I hope everybody is clear with the first example okay now the excel numbers are also correct we are done with the example number one where we had a multiplication problem and we solved it using logarithm now let us go to example number two example number two let us take an example of I want to do 50 divided by 2. Using my common sense, I know the answer is 25. To get this answer using logarithm, the equation what I will use will be log 50 minus log 2. Now log 50 is having two digits. Adjacent would be one point. For 50, now I have to take the log value. So for 5, the log value is 0 0.6989. 6989 minus log 2. 2 is having one digit. Adjacent value would be 0. Point. The value of log 2 would be 2 is here and the value turns out to be 0. 0.3010. It would be 0. 0.3010. So when I do 1.6989 minus 0. 0.3010, I get the answer as 1.3979. Therefore, I have to now take the anti-log of 1.3979. Adjacent is 1, which means we'll have two digits and I have to take the value of 3979. 3979. Yes, 3975 corresponds to 2.50. So I told you there are two digits. So 2.5 two digits means the answer turns out to be 25. This is exactly the same answer what we got using this equation. Now I go to example number 3. Example 3, I want to calculate how much is the square root of 25. Using our common sense, we know the answer is 5. In log, we will do it this way. It would be log 25 divided by 2. Alright, so let us take log 25 log 25 has two digits adjacent value will be one point now 25 the corresponding value would be 2.5 2.5 comes here and the value is point point three nine seven nine here i get the answer as 1.3979 i have to divide this by 2 now 1.3979 divided by 2 i get the answer as 
zero point six nine eight nine five. So I have to now find anti log of zero point six nine eight nine five. This is zero point means the digit will turn out to be one digit. Point six nine eight nine. Let's search for that now. We are coming up to point six nine eight one. That is four point nine nine. Approximately five. And since it is zero, the answer turns out to be five. Friends, this is exactly the same answer what we got using our common sense approach. Also, let us now go to the final example on logarithm. Example number four. I would like to find out how much is twenty square. We know the answer is four hundred. So what I'll do now is in logarithm we should do it as log twenty. Into two, twenty has two digits, so the adjacent would be one point. For two, the log value is three zero one zero into two. We get the answer as two point six zero two. So now I have to find out anti log of two point six zero two. Adjacent is two, which means the actual answer will have three digits coming over there. Now based on this. Let us find out what will be the anti log of point six zero two. Yes, six zero two corresponds to four. So here it would be four point zero zero. But since adjacent is two, we have three digits. So the answer what we get over here is four hundred. Friends, this is exactly the same answer what we got using our common sense. Also, I hope you are clear with the concept of. logarithm and anti logarithm